um, Ms. Jackson, who is the Director General of the Statistical Institute. We met Ms. Jackson this morning. And her presentation is an overview of official statistics in Jamaica. She look at national perspectives, the legislative environment, institutional capacity, and advocacy. Ms. Jackson is the Director General of the Statistical Institute of Jamaica, as I mentioned before. She holds a master's degree in administration from the Nova Southern Southeastern University and also completed the qualifying examinations of the Chartered Institute of Studies at the College of Arts, Science, and Technology, CAS, which is now the University of Technology here in Jamaica. Ms. Jackson has served as CEO at the Caribbean Housing Finance Corporation, Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Environment and Housing, and in 2001, she became the Director General of the Statistical Institute of Jamaica. She has also, through CARICOM, contributed to the Regional Statistics Program, and that's a program that's very dear to her heart as we seek to coordinate regional and national statistics. In October of, the, of last year, on the 18th, she received the Order of Distinction Commander Class for her voluntary work with the Mentally Challenged, and she's serving as Vice President of the Jamaica Association on Intellectual Disabilities. Ms. Jackson also offers voluntary service to the Jamaica Boxing Board of Control. <laughs> She's not a boxer. <laughs> she has an, she, she's a lady who has envisioned and introduced a number of improvements um, in the field of statistics while she has been at staffing. And her passion, among others, has been quality statistics. She has been working um, assiduously for improvements in various areas in the field of statistics. And part of her big achievement, as far as this is concerned, has been the white paper on assuring integrity in statistics, which is included in your package. I'm going to be inviting Ms. Jackson to the podium now to share uh, what she has to say with us, to us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Jackson. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. While I sit there, I'm thinking that you are feeling kind of cold. Yes. I know it's not, the it, it, it temperature is 18 degrees <laughs> Celsius. <laughs> Some one is saying 25, this one is saying 18. I understand. But I expect that in the morning that you should generate a little bit of heat and passion. If you have the passion, then the heat will follow. So you need to wake up and get alive. We are dealing with a subject this morning that everybody seems to think is very boring and uninteresting. Since my tenure at Staten, I don't think it has been. I think it's been very exciting. And every time I see my choir perform, I know that statistics is not boring. <laughs> now, my colleagues at the head table, my colleagues at the back, all of us here, friends, colleagues, welcome to this our workshop. And as Mrs. McKenzie told you this morning, this process has been going on since 2001, 2002, when we wrote our strategic plan. And this is one of the activities that came out of it. But funding has been a hindrance. We are pleased to be funded and supported by UNDP in getting this on the way. I mean, it's critical to us, and as Dr. Liam said in his presentation, Without quality statistics, we can't measure our development. At the top of my slide, I couldn't help but put that up there. Population and housing census to it. I can't, I mean, I eat, sleep, and drink census. And everybody at starting is now eating, drinking census. And the need to learn the message, everyone comes, you, me, all of it. And I'd like to say it. Yow, yow. <laughs> Everyone counts. That's our message for us. 
and by this I'm sure you have heard. We're looking today at official statistics in Jamaica, and the structure of my presentation will look at the nature of concerns, the situational analysis, the action plan, and the conclusion. What are some of the concerns of official statistics? The national statistics and its, its connection with official statistics, the associated challenges, the impact of globalization, and the development agenda. We have heard a little bit about all of that since morning, but it's important you're going to hear a lot of repetition. And you know, yesterday we were told that repetition is important for learning. The more you hear something and when watching is part of all of that. So, by the time you'll be here today, you'll be thoroughly brainwashed into recognizing that what we're doing is important and that you're going to become part of it. <coughs> the National Statistics System, not just in Jamaica, but worldwide. There are a number of established uh, units in the, within the public sector. And Mrs. Mackenzie outlined a number of them. There's DOJ, there's STATIN, there's Ministry of Health, Education, um, to name a few. I don't want to go into all of them. The output from each of these relates to the mandate of that particular ministry, department, or agency. It is also governed by their own specific laws and regulations. Not statutes governed by the Statistics Act, Ministry of Education by the, by the Education Act, and everybody has its own. But there is no structure that covers all of us in Jamaica. In some countries, though, they have gone on to legislate. For example, Britain, which is a country that had relied on precedent and not too much legislation, has recently amended, created a statistics act, and put into their statistics act their governance structure. So we are well on our way. We are doing the same things that a lot of countries are doing. There's generally the outputs are usually included in annual reports of the ministry, department, or agency of the case may be. There is generally no scope or standard when compiling and reporting the results, particularly in the social statistics area. We heard Dr. Leah telling us about um, the national account system, which is largely with macroeconomics. What, therefore, is official statistics? Official statistics refer to the singular output of the products and of the, of the various NDAs. NDAs, ministries, departments, and agencies. It's such a long phrase that I've decided to shorten. So anytime you hear me say NDA, you know what it means. But we would like to prefer that official statistics, because not everything that every ministry or every department or every agency produces will be considered to be official statistics. We need to set the framework and we need to define those items which are going to become official statistics. The role and value of official statistics, again, Dr. Leon outlined a few of them this morning, but what are they? It, they assist in monitoring and evaluating government's policy. They provide information for decision making. We keep talking about evidence-based decision. That's what we're talking about there. We need to incorporate the statistics into our business processes, both at the public sector and the private sector. And this is the use of the statistics, and it is very important. What are some of the things that we need to look at? We need to look at trend analysis. We need to measure performance and competitiveness. I was talking to somebody about the cabinet office. This is something that we need to look at. We already have the um, units downtown somewhere that is measuring competitiveness in, in, in the public sector. We need to incorporate demographic data on the population into our decision making. We are satisfying the needs of our people, and that's one of our major ob objectives as public servants. We need to measure the population's well-being, living standards, quality of health, housing, education, and all of these other social factors. And more, and also very important, is the business of regional and international comparison. We are moving into the CSME, and if we don't have regional data, country data that compiles up to regional data, then the CSME will not become effective. We have to measure 
country then region of world, and world is looking more and more at the, at the region rather than countries for development. Addressing equality. Again, this morning we heard about some of the quality issues and how. What I'm trying to do here is put them almost in, in, in a kind of year of sequence. First, there was the UN Fundamental Principles of Official Statistics. And we have the publication, and all this, this is in the back of it, at appendix, the UN Fundamental Principles of Statistics is at appendix E in, your, in, your, in the white paper. This was done in 1994 by the UN Statistics. And it is a framework in which, if you look at it, it helps us to guide the development of our own statistical program. Then we have the dissemination standards, the SDDS and the GDDS. The SDDS came in 1996 after the Mexican fallout, um, economic fallout. It was a stringent standard, and many countries could not comply with those regulations, those standards. And so the GDS came a couple of years later. Jamaica is a subscriber to the GDS. And right now, Dr. Leans and his team are here, and they are looking to, for us to move to the SDDS. What is that going to mean for us? It's going to mean that those of us who have to provide information, we're going to have to provide it with more standards, more frequently, and on time, and I'm going to emphasize the on time. We also have to make the commitment to the IMF and to the world at large that we are committed to improving the quality of statistics. And because we are here this morning, it's a sure indicator from my perspective that we are, that is our objective, to improve the quality of our statistics. There are other quality frameworks, other quality standards that are, are being introduced. There's the ISO, which looks at process and products. And a number of countries in the world have adopted the ISO standards for, for in their whole production of statistics. I know Chile has been using it, and I think some of the countries in Europe have actually been certified under, with the ISO standards. And in more recent time, we have had the SDMX, which is a data, data standard for exchange of data. SDMX is it's an acronym for Statistical Data and Metadata Exchange. It will set the standard of how we move data across, what are our requirements, what information we will produce in respect of each data set. And, and that is timely because as we move forward, we are going to be working hopefully with all of you so that we can ensure that we have quality data in a standard form moving across the system. 